Hi friends! So we are back with another installment in this series of me re-watching Xena Warrior Princess and we're back with my five top favorite episodes from season one of Xena. So if you're interested in watching that, stay tuned. So we're going to start with episode number one. Episode number one, Sins of the Past. Uh, we get the introduction of Xena. Um, it's one of my favorite episodes because you know we get a little backstory. You get you get to see our um, you know some of the main characters that are going to be important in the series, and it's just so like well paced. We get these gorgeous overviews of New Zealand, and it's just uh, you know we get an interesting villain who plays a part throughout the series. You see his mom, and Gabrielle. And it's just. It's just a really solid introduction to this character. Even though we we know Xena just a little bit from um, her three arc episode and her, her three arc story in Hercules Legendary Journeys, the Unchained Heart series. Um, but I feel like that was more focused on just, you know, the current events of those, those episodes. Um, and didn't give us a lot of backstory, you know, we knew she was a warlord, we knew she was kind of struggling with trying to redeem herself, but, um, you know, the first episode gives us, you know, you know, that she had a brother and she got him killed and all this, you know, rich, you know, meaty, meaty stuff that added layers to this character and, um, and it's just really good. It's just a really good introduction. And I loved it. So the next episode on the list, number two, is The Path Not Taken. Um, so again, I really loved the story of this episode. Um, uh, mainly the Marcus Zena stuff. Um, and Marcus was the first, one of the first prominent black characters that was introduced on the show. And he was a main love interest of Zena. And Zena being a, the main character of the show and a white woman, you know, these types of relationships were not commonplace on television at the time. Um, and even today, they're still people take some issue with interracial inter relationships. You know, Rashon comes to mind right away being in, you know, me being in the Walking Dead fandom with Michonne being a black woman and Rick being a white man. You know, there was some ripples in the fandom um, about that. You know, I'm not a Rashon shipper, so I didn't firsthand see it or, you know, know much about it, but I did hear, you know, people making racist comments towards, uh, Michonne and, and, the, and not liking the relationship based on that and all that. So um, seeing it and it being portrayed and it being not a big deal was revolutionary. And also him being the first man that Zena has been really vulnerable with was really um, interesting to me. Like I really uh, love that story, their, their story um their love story and like I, I don't know if I mentioned it in the I think I did because I think maybe uh, more of loved was on my list of episodes that I used to love and then kind of became a least least favorite because the story the plot wasn't my favorite um anymore but I just really loved the Xena Marcus stuff in that episode um, beyond that, let's see, uh, yeah, it was just a really good, good episode. Enjoyed the relationship with, uh, Zena and Marcus, representation, all of that. The next episode on the list, number three, Warrior Ellipsis Princess. Um, it is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite episodes ever have seen a warrior princess. It's so hilarious. Um, we get the first of the Xena doppelgangers, Princess Diana. Um, and years later, looking back, I'm like, that has to be obvious, an obvious connection to the real Princess Diana. Um, but yes, we have Lucy Lawless playing 
an actual princess royalty who is just the complete opposite of Xena, the warrior princess. She's girly and she's soft and she doesn't know how to fight and she's, you know, is a princess to the T. She loves getting pampered, her hair brushed a hundred times, I think it was, 200 times, something like that, you know, the gowns. And um, it's just com comical genius. I, I love that episode. Um, it's, like I said, it's funny and it's an uh, interesting plot. I loved, 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 loved. And I'm gonna make another top five video of my favorite costumes in season one. And Princess Diana's gown is one of my most favorite costumes in the whole series. Um, the first gown that she, is it a wedding gown? Um, it might not be. It's one of her gowns. I'll put it in a picture in that episode. And I love it so much that I based my prom dress. Maybe I have a picture in there, maybe not. Um, I based my prom dress on it. I got a similar style and I just lived my best life. <laughs> um, and I'm thinking that that's gonna, I'm going to at least try to recreate this dress, maybe using my old prom dress as a base. Um, as one of my cosplays for the Xena convention in 2020. Um, so yeah, it was just a really good, funny episode and I really enjoyed it. And um, like I said, it's the first doppelganger that we meet. Xena has multiples throughout the seasons. Um, you know, Meg and uh, Leah, I think. And Gabrielle has a couple of doppelgangers and Joxer has a couple. So it's the first and you know, we have these main actors playing their doppelgangers. So just a really lighthearted episode and um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So number four on my list is Royal Couple of Thieves. Um, and I did not remember a lot of this episode going into it. I knew we met Autolycus. I knew that there was some sort of heist situation, but I didn't really remember the specifics, which made re-watching it um, really enjoyable. Like I think I mixed up some elements of Royal Couple of Thieves with um, A Fistful of Dinars with um, King Khan, another episode about like trickery and stuff. Um, towards the, I don't know what season, maybe season three, um, two or three, I can't remember. Um, but I, I, I mixed up a bunch of those episodes, but uh, re-watching Royal Couple of Thieves and not really remembering um, what happened made it super enjoyable. I was just sitting there watching it as if it was the first time. and. Um, it was really a lot, lots of twists, lots of turns. Um, we meet Autolycus, played by Bruce Campbell, who um, we see throughout the series. It was just really a really interesting episode. Um, and we get to see some elements of Xena that we've never seen before. You know, she can't be the tough warrior, kick-ass woman. She has to kind of be in disguise and um, work with a partner who's not Gabrielle and you know at this point in the series Gabrielle has no fighting skills whatsoever so she's uh, more talky um, so uh, yeah we got to see her working with a different partner um, kind of going back to how we saw her in Hercules kind of using her feminine wiles to um, disarm her opponents and whatnot. And I really, I that's another thing that I really love about Zena. Like she doesn't have any qualms about using her femininity, her feminine wiles to, um, to use that as, as her advantage. She's not all this, she's not all that, she's not all brawn, she's not all brains, she's not all seductress. She's all of them together and she knows how to use them. That's what I really loved about Zena and her layers. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed the plot of this episode and I really loved, you know, we get to meet 
some essential characters in, in this episode. And that brings us to the last, number five, uh, of one of my favorite episodes this season. It is, uh, what is it called? <laughs> oh, Callisto. Yes, Callisto. I, I was thinking, uh, is there a doctor in the house? Which I do love, but I didn't, I, I didn't love it as much as I remember I loved it this time around. So number five goes to Callisto. Do I need to explain? Callisto is our main villain of this, this series, basically. She is a bad ass warrior to the rival of Xena. Um, she is the first character that we, you know, all throughout this, this first season, we see Xena with her signature weapon, the chakram, and she's throwing it, and it's totally unique to her, and nobody can wield it, so we think. And Callisto catches it midair. It is such an iconic scene. She catches it midair, and that's it. We know this girl is not to be messed with. She, she's just as smart as Xena. She can fight just as well as Xena, and she is crazy. She's crazy, so she has no inhibitions. Um, and we get to know that Xena, she, as she says, made her. Um, you know, Xena destroyed her village, and she was one of a handful of people who survived to tell the story, and, and all of her life, she's just been waiting for this moment to uh, exact revenge. And, ah, oh, it's such a good episode. Um, and, you know, we meet Joxer in this episode, another character, as, I don't know if you can tell, the, there's a kind of a theme. I really loved the episodes that introduce some of the main characters of the season and introduce plot points that reverberate throughout the series. So yeah, you meet Joxer and um, and his kind of funny rivalry with Gabrielle is 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 awesome in this episode. And um, you know we have Xena struggling with this dilemma, like I made this person who she is, and if I had it then um, who could she have been? Do I show her mercy? Do I kill her? Do I try and uh, rehabilitate her? Like that struggle is really great um, in this episode. And then we have that amazing campfire scene where basically, you know, Xena, you know, is crying and admits to what happened at Sura. And it's just such a good episode and I, you know, love Callisto, love to hate Callisto. No, just just really love Callisto. Um, and her costume is amazing. You know, she's kind of the opposite of Xena in, in a way. She's blonde, where Xena's dark haired and, and blue eyed. Callisto's blonde and brown eyed. We have her costume being more revealing than Xena's, you know, really accentuating or like her her body and her femininity where um, you would think that she would kind of use that more to her advantage. We see her kind of shy away from it, where Xena embraces that. And I don't know, I feel like that's a little uh, interesting and in how they're opposites. Um, now obviously, Callisto's <laughs> one screw, one screw short of a full tool kit that analogy got away from me but um she's very much unhinged more unhinged um character than xena ever was even in her um darkest days um yeah so they're them two they're opposites uh their oppositeness it's really interesting and uh, i really loved really loved seeing them play off each other um and I hope Hudson Lee comes to the convention. She's kind of shied away from acting um, in these last couple of years. She's more focused on her spirituality and her yoga practice. So I hope she comes. Um, but yeah, it would be awesome to get a photo op with them too or 
individually or whatever just to hear her stories and, and, and see a panel with her and I, uh, but anyway guys those were my top five favorite episodes of season one of Xena um meet me here next time we'll be talking about my five top favorite costumes from season one of Xena like I said totally watch you do this rewatch with an eye on costumes because I want to make a couple for my cosplays for the convention so that'll be my next up my next little video in this series of my rewatch but yeah guys thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video but anyway guys those are my type fop top fop she can Fight as well as Xena, she can, you know, 